Okay, I know I look a little bit like Tuco in The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure out which one of these are Taylor tuned. And of course, I already know it is easy to tell because of the, with even without shooting, because of the single action hammer cock. Because this one is special. And this one is good. But let's load up and shoot a few rounds here. I am still trying to get to know these guns. I've had them for a while. Taylor's has been patient with me. Um, but we are going to get some shots down range. And I'm going to tell you what I think about these two beautiful guns. And speaking of beautiful, I'll give you a close look here in just a minute. But let's warm them up. I always seem to leave one out, but uh, fantastic guns, I can tell you that. And they are beautiful, in fact. Let me show you how beautiful they are right now. So, by the way, if I didn't say it a while ago, this is the non-tuned version. And so I'm going to shoot a little bit and, oops, load one, skip one. Uh, I'm going to shoot a little bit and then, um, and then of this one, and then I'm going to shoot the Taylor tuned. And eventually we will get around to an opinion about the Taylor tuned version and whether or not it's worth it. So let me try again. See if I can get, can't get all five on target. Discipline. It's all about discipline. <laughs> well, you know what? If you've watched much of this channel, you know I spend a whole lot more time shooting lever guns and other guns as well than I do shooting revolvers. And so I am still, I am still trying to uh, master that craft. And uh, it's a fun journey. I may have to mark that cylinder and see if it's always the same one. But I'm going to send you back to that other guy and let him tell you a little bit more about the Taylor's Gunfighter Defender. Well, there they are, a pair of all steel, beautiful handguns from Taylor's and Company, both of them the, Taylor, the uh, Taylor's uh, Gunfighter Defender. And they both have color case hardening on the frame, on the loading gate, and on the hammer. All steel guns. But for you guys and girls that are Colt Single Action Army fans, you may have noticed when I was channeling Tuco that there's, there's no T. And the, uh, both the Single Action Army original design as well as the uh, old model Ruger Single Action revolvers, they both had uh, four clicks. And so um, these only have three. Don't know what's different on the inside, but uh, just three clicks on these guys. And while I have them, let's talk a little bit about the trigger pull. Outstanding trigger pulls, but there is a difference. And as I alluded to earlier, the guy I alluded to earlier, it is in the hammer cock. And in just a few minutes, the guy's gonna give you a 
close-up of the uh, work we did to measure the hammercock as well as the trigger pull. So stick around for that. But there are a couple of other differences between the Taylor's Gunfighter Defender and uh, the Colt Single Action Army. And I'm going to throw up something right here that you can see where I've done an overlay with the Taylor's Cattleman, which is more true to the Single Action Army frame size and shape. And um, I've lay overlaid it over the Gunfighter Defender. And you can tell right here that with the Gunfighter Defender, the grip frame is actually longer, and that's because they used their model 1860 Army grip frame, which is longer than the traditional single action Army grip frame. And um, so it's longer and it's actually wider in this orientation. It's a, uh, a feel that I like. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, gives you a little more purchase down here around your your uh, little finger. So I like that. The other, the other difference between the, uh, the single action army design and this guy right here, the original single action army, is that on the Gunfighter Defender you can see that the hammer is straightened and the spur is lowered. And so that um, facilitates fanning if you're up to doing that. I'm not and wouldn't recommend it at all. But what it does do for me is it allows me to cock and fire the revolver without really letting go of the grip of the gun. And so I should be able to shoot this without having to reach up, grab the spur and cock, and then completely get a new grip. So two big differences between the original Single Action Army and the Gunfighter Defender. Both of them I look at as a positive. So let's get back to that um, other guy, let him do some more shooting, show us that, um, that uh, trigger pull and hammer cock, those forces, and then I'll close out with some, uh, some thoughts on the guns in general. We do have some negatives to talk about, so stick around for that. And we'll see if the guy could ever get five shots on steel. So what do I think so far? I'll tell you what. Um, I think it's uh, really, this is the non-tuned version, like I said. And as you can tell, it's beautiful and it shoots pretty good. Now, let's shoot this guy here. This is there, and they are essentially identical revolvers but this one has been tailor tuned. And I'll tell you here in just a minute what they tuned. But right now, let's get it warmed up. And then because it is, has no safety, as I said earlier, we load one, we skip a hole, then we load four more consecutively. And then we cock it all the way, let the hammer down on an empty cylinder so we're safe. There's no way that this hammer is going to fire anything if it gets bumped. So. Taylor tuned Colt or a Colt <laughs> um, Gunfighter Defender Taylor tuned. Let's see what happens here. Okay, all right, I think the joke's on me, but uh, I'm gonna hit five out of five before we finish this video, so it could wind up being 30 minutes long. And I think right now I'll let you look at the video that I did showing the single action trigger pull using the Lyman trigger pull gauge, just like we did before, and the hammer cock. And that'll tell you what the difference is between the standard, the standard gunfighter defender, five and a half inch barrel, and the Taylor tuned Gunfighter Defender five and a half inch barrel. Now let's try the hammer pull. Let's try that hammer pull now. Mm -hmm. 
Asturias. Oh yes, very nice. Well, for all of their good looks, they were fun to shoot, really a joy with the, um, with the single action with the trigger pull and also with the double action or the, the uh, hammer cock on the Taylor tuned. Fantastic guns, but there is uh, something we need to talk about and that is the barrel cylinder gap. And on the, on the standard model, the barrel cylinder gap is a nine thousandths of an inch. Now, I will say that I never had any sense of spitting or misalignment of the cylinders. The lockup is good and solid. Um, so nothing, no problem there, but nine thousandths of an inch is a little bit, um, a little bit on the high side for me. The Taylor tuned version, the barrel cylinder gap is 13 thousandths of an inch. And for a gun that has been um, to a gunsmith, a Taylor's gunsmith here in the United States, to get tuned, that is really an excessive an excessive amount of barrel cylinder gap. Now, if it didn't have that, I would say the $150 premium for this particular gun would be worth it. And I doubt that all of their guns, just like this one, doesn't have that excessive a gap. The $150 uh, premium for the Taylor Tuned is money well spent. And so with that said, let's see if the guy ever got five shots on steel. Okay, here we go again. All right, we did it. 